just uh, get started directly into the topic. We are from the Austrian Power Grid, the independent transmission operator of Austria. So we're working with the power grid in Austria. And the GIS team is mainly involved in the planning, building, and maintaining of the high voltage uh, power grid of Austria. And uh, just to get directly into the our use case for uh, vector tile cache and vector tile cache data. So uh, we are interested in the data of the Federal Office of Metrology and Surveying of Austria. Uh, we see here in the uh, images what this data looks like. So they produce a variety of the surveying data. Um, and for us, mainly interesting, there's the parcel boundaries um, and the land cover information. So on the right, we see the land cover information. In the middle, we see the parcels. And we, as a um, power grid operator, we need to know uh, where are the parcels, what's, what are the boundaries, how do they change, and then in a second step, who owns this, but this is a other office. <laughs> um, so in the past, we got this uh, data via shapefile or geo package. So we asked them, we need current data, the data of today or something. And one week later, we got the information or something like this. But now they have a pretty nice vector tile cache that's updated daily, and it's for free. <laughs> So a lot of um, plus points here. Um, and as a vector tile cache works, we can uh, select the data. We get the attribute information and everything. Uh, and also, we can zoom in and get the detailed data. So before, we just saw the rough boundaries of Austria and the uh, districts and so on. And here, we see the parcel boundaries. And we can select them and see there's the um, the parcel boundary, but also uh, like some other information, the NFL, if you see <laughs> down in the identifier. Oh, I can try this stuff. Yeah, <laughs> I had a use case here. Um, uh, you see this GST, that's the parcel information. And down here, there's also the uh, NFL, that's the um, land use information. So we get all this uh, information out of this vector tile cache for free and also <laughs> from today um, or yesterday probably but um, yeah so um, it's possible in QGIS standard tools to select this and also export the data so I select one parcel export it and so on or also select multiple of them but what we are needing is like an automated approach as we are constructing power lines of um, some kilometers like <laughs> 10, 50, 100 kilometers or so, and we need uh, the information in a buffer of about uh, 30 meters around this. So it's a, a huge area. It's still Austria. It's not so <laughs> huge, but it's still more than a single person can like click uh, and so on. And also, it's possible to have like really complex polygons as area of interest. So it's uh, easier to have it automated, and there are less mistakes possible. So our requirements was to select the parcel boundaries in, the, in our area of interest, then dissolve the parcel parts. As we know, it's a vector tile. Uh, so the information or the, the geometry is distributed in possible different uh, tiles. And we want one geometry for the whole parcel. And of course, we need to keep the attributes because we need them for post-processing. We need to uh, get the data from uh, other offices, like as I said before, uh, the information who owns this parcel, uh, and also we need the geometry pretty in a good way, like the, the exact geometry, um, as we need it also for maps and so on. So um, our solution was to um, create a QGIS script because we have a lot of users; they should easily be able to use it so they can just have here in the middle their no sorry wrong wrong thing here in the middle their area of interest that's like um, 50 kilometers with a buffer of about 10 or 20 meter um, and uh, they then select our script here which looks like this just select your area of interest and uh, tell it where to to save the data um, and 
it's already uh, in the script with which uh, vector tile cache service to use. In this case, the BEY, the Federal Office of uh, Metrology and um, Surveying. Uh, and then it runs. And for this area we had here, it was not that big, so it was in some seconds finished. And the um, uh, export looks like this. So we have uh, our parcel boundaries for the whole area. Um, but I will come to some uh, <laughs> remarks about this. But in general, the important thing is I can just zoom in, get every parcel information, and have all the information. So if you see here, uh, here are all the attribute information we need for further processing for further uh, reports and so on. So that's good, <laughs> everything's here. Um, and then what's our remarks from this? Um, it works for different vector tile caches. So we, we used it especially for this one use case, but it, uh, we tried it and it's also working, for example, for the open infra map. That's also interesting in our field of work because uh, all the power lines are in there or most of them. Uh, it's the data from the open street map, uh, especially for infrastructure. And you can just use the same uh, process for this data. Uh, and what's also important for our case, but probably for most cases, as uh, the vector tile cache has uh, multiple, possibly multiple layers, uh, mainly you are just interested in one or two of these layers, and you can just tell the uh, algorithm to use what the layer you're interested in. Um, but there are some things you have to be careful about. For example, uh, that there might be projection inaccuracies. Uh, as the vector type cache we used um, was in Web Mercator, uh, we have to be careful if you're using a coordinate system that's just for Austria, because as you see here on the, uh, once again, the wrong, button. Uh, if you see here, the gray ones uh, are the data that uh, we, we uh, the result data, and in our area of interest, there is a, a spot that wasn't uh, selected. And that's an um, easy uh, reason for this. So if we have like our area of interest, like we just make a line from about 40 kilometers, making a buffer around this, um, then we try to uh, project this buffer it might look like this because there are no vertices in between. So uh, it's just to keep in mind uh, if you're having different coordinate systems and different projections, be a bit careful. Um, this one, it was easily to solve, just put in a lot of, or some additional vertices and the projection works just fine. But you have to look at your results all the time. Um, Another thing that is really important for this vector tile cache is that um, it's, uh, we need to know what is the scale where the, uh, the polygons are um, uh, perfect, uh, have the, the right, um, um, like, like uh, presented in the right way, because in other um, um, scales, it looks uh, like this. The blue one is the simplified in, in some scale uh, version, and the black is the one we actually need. So you need to know your vector tile cache and where it is um, correct. Um, and of course, the, the, the polygons can be bigger than the selected tiles. So you see here the, <laughs> the gray areas, uh, the, the parses are for sure bigger than this. So um, that was, is important to know, um, yeah. And also the amount of data uh, you get as a response is limited, so you um, cannot like ask for whole of Austria. But now we are getting into the, the, the technical realization and I'll get. Thank you, Helene. So I'm gonna show you how we implemented it in QGIS with Python. And uh, so we used Py uh, QGIS and GeoPandas. So I just show you the bare code. It should run in theory. Um, you have to import, of course, all the uh, libraries like QGIS Core or GeoPandas or OS, like in the first line, uh, because we use it in an uh, off-screen environment. Uh, there were some settings we had to set it to uh, environment variable off-screen. 
And then it's the, just the normal uh, starting of a uh, headless, queerless, um, geo uh, PyQJS script. That's usually what you find in any doc. Uh, the next step, we define our vector tile cache by the string you see on the presentation. It comes also from the docs from katastapfgb.at. And uh, the important thing is to set the maximum resolution uh, to 16, because that's where the data comes without any um, generalization. So we take this uh, in mind. The next thing is, um, again, because of the scale we need to uh, realize, uh, we need to keep in mind, um, so we need to set a selection context. The selection context, as it says, is needed in the selection. And um, so we set the scale for the selection for to be safe for 5,000, because the 16 is, is the maximum scale level. And it's about 1 to 8,000. And to be on the safe side, we take the 5,000 scale. So to get the raw data and not some generalized data. So, and then we finally have to define some um, selection geometry like Helena showed us before on the pictures. I have a very simplified WKT line string. And uh, yeah, the next thing is uh, already the magic, um, some very basic QGIS um, functionality select by geometry. We take our vector tile cache layer we uh, already defined the selection geometry and the selection context. And that's all the trick for this one. Uh, yeah. As Helene also mentioned, um, to export only some layers, we had to limit the layers we are interested in for our export. And as Helene mentioned, the vector tile cache, it uh, comes as cache, it's tiles, uh, and so those tiles are not connected to each other, but we want to use the full geometries. And so, for example, the layer GSD for Grundstücke, for parcels, we dissolve them by uh, KG, which is the smallest um, possible uh, area, and the Grundstücksnummer, which is the number, the ID within the KG, which is the uh, identifier. And uh, the other layer we are interested in are the uh, usages, and so it's called the Nutzungsflächen. In this case, we define no other uh, dissolve attributes, so we would just get the tiles, but just to show you both of the options. Yep. So um, as I mentioned, we need to go through these layers. Every feature has the information of the coding layer, like uh, the information tile layer tells you which layer we are dealing with. And according to, is it the parcel or is it some other layer, we either use it or uh, forget it. If the layer itself doesn't exist at the moment, uh, we create a new one, a new layer. So just an empty list, and then we populate it by every iteration. And yeah, then uh, one maybe quite important thing for the next step is also that each feature we define um, comes as a geo interface object. And that's something very handy we can use in the next step, because this geo interface uh, standard is also used by GeoPandas, and so we can easily use every of our features in GeoPandas. That's what's on the next slide. So we iterate over every of our layers and uh, over every of our items that we, we already saved, and uh, every layer becomes a GeoPandas geodata frame from these uh, features. Then we have to define the CRS and uh, append it again to, uh, to another dictionary. And um, yeah, if there is information 
which attributes are used for dissolving, then we also dissolve these layers. So we don't get it tile by tile, but a geometry that um, is um, dissolved and uh, has the whole full geometry of the parcel or whatever object we want to use. And so that's done in this part. And of course, then we get some results and very easily we can export them to some geo package or there are uh, some other use cases. That's also the reason why we use GeoPandas because uh, the one thing is we get it as a geo package, but we also need it as a list and uh, then we need this list to export it to something else. But with QGIS and GeoPandas, it works hand in hand and that's quite a good thing. And so, Helene, I give you the mic again. Thank you, just for um, some final remarks, uh, because one, as I would say, open question kind of is uh, quality checks. Can we actually guarantee that the export is complete? Do we get all our parcels? And no, actually we can't. So um, it's a bit of a question. We have really looking into it, if we have the, uh, all the information gathered. Um, but there are not no easy uh, quality checks possible. Um, and as I said before, we have this limitation with the huge areas, so at some point if I try to like uh, ask for a whole region of Austria, um, the, the vector tile service at some point says no, <laughs> after like 10,000 or so parcels, or uh, it's not possible anymore. And we were thinking of using as a pre-processing the QGIS tool uh, download vector tiles from the vector tile cache, uh, but uh, it didn't work for this vector tile uh, service, uh, not, or at least it worked, but not uh, at the scale we needed. So it was always simplified for the, um, uh, the, the geometry was simplified, so it was not possible for our use case to have like the exact boundaries. And also keep in mind the speed, it's not dependent only on the amount of data you're asking, but uh, the amount of tiles. So for example, if you try with the uh, open inframap, there won't be a lot of geometries in your result. There will be maybe one line, one power line or something, but you asked for thousands of uh, tiles, so it will take some time. So thank you for your attention and looking forward for some questions. Thank you, Helene and Lucas. So, uh, any questions? Oh, thank you. Um, yeah, it's nice. Always nice to see that you can really use vector tiles for lots of like different applications, not just mapping. So, uh, did you have a limitation that this data is not available on WFS, or did you, or is it available on WFS as well? Is it only available as vector tiles? Yeah, it's only available okay. by vector tiles. Makes sense. And you yeah. can buy it every half a year, but we won't we don't like to buy it. Of every course half not. A year. Yeah, yeah. I was and just I was just hoping there's no other standard there. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I was just hoping that they would publish it size somehow for like if you want more than tiles. Yeah, makes sense. Thank you. Well, um I think like they are changing it a, a lot at the moment because this is a pretty new service. And so, so they are doing something. They they are uh, renewing their infrastructure. I guess I don't know it for sure, but there's something going on. So hopefully, in the next year or something, there will be even more possibilities. Yeah, thanks uh, for the presentation. I have one question since I also uh, have dealt a lot with uh, parcel data. Um, when you request like huge amounts of parcel data, is your tool also like running uh, checks on the on the geometries, because I ran into issues that there are faulty geometries in there, and before you can process it further, you have to actually fix these things. But this is also like part of the functionality. Not at the moment, no. Uh, we just received those informations and then dissolve it like we showed, but there's no more quality checks at the moment. So uh, we realized when you're not in the Zoom level 16, then there's the generalized geometry, uh, and it doesn't work at all. But 
the kind of guarantee it in the documentation that the 17, uh, the 16 zoom level, it's not generalized at all. I mean, it's transformed from the original CRS to the uh, Web Mercator, but yeah. Also, uh, we had a lot of uh, geometry problems when we used the old shapefile version, but up to now, not really with this data when we di directly downloaded it. So maybe we are just lucky, but we should <laughs> dive into this, yeah. Uh, thank you. Any other? Yeah. Uh, thank you for the talk. The, the limitation for, for huge areas, uh, what would you say uh, is, is the actual reason for it, or what, what's the most limiting in this kind of processing? Uh, we will have to have further tests, I think, but I guess it's the amount of tiles we are trying to, to ask at the same or at a short time. Um, so maybe we can actually go to the, the office providing it and ask for their current uh, um, limitations, or we will try with like making a pause after <laughs> some part, and then, if, then, then we would at least know where, where the problem lies. Yeah, because, yeah, that's one idea we had, like making some pauses or, or uh, making smaller uh, amounts of, 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 of requests. Uh, the pause, maybe it's a bit hard to implement because we just used the standard QGIS uh, select by location, so I don't know how much uh, effort it needs to implement some pauses there. So the probably better idea is to uh, chunk the data in, in, in smaller uh, portions and then request them and do the final uh, dissolving afterwards. That's something that came on our minds. Thank you. More questions? I have one, again, non-technical one. Like uh, your Australian power grid or Austrian? Yeah. That's <laughs> everyone, Not the kangaroos. Everyone makes this. Yeah. Uh, is it like government organization or non-commercial? Uh, it's not a direct government organization, but we are mainly owned by the state. Yeah. So and more than fifty percent. <laughs> and the cadaster from which you get the data is also. Is like only uh, government? Yeah. So, and you said you cannot get shape files because you need to pay for them, and that it. I don't understand how this intra-governmental, like, uh, communication exchange of data involves so much, uh, like, problems with data conversion and payments and stuff. Like, your boss stay don't. Why? That's a <laughs> difficult question, but I think it, uh, it's um, answered by the way Austria works. <laughs> I don't know. No, but it's always uh, like this. Um, it's not like totally public. And um, as I said before, I mean, they're changing now a lot. Uh, up to like 10 years ago, it was like really, really state like. <laughs> and I think they're now changing all of this stuff. But uh, data transfer from one organization to the other, it's still a complicated topic in, I think, everywhere. I don't know. <laughs> okay, in Austria. <laughs> yeah, so I think geodata policy in Austria is worth another presentation, another talk. Maybe not in the Phosphogee-ish um, setting, because there's not so much open thinking in many organizations, but as we see, the PEV, they published a vector tile cache with some license we can use, so it's progress and we hope it continues. Uh, well, we're, we, if you yeah. make it really short. Yeah, just show us. Do they know that you're using that yeah. <laughs> Maybe they have our IP addresses <laughs> and yeah, that I'm quite sure about that. The first tests we did uh, worked a bit longer, and um, yeah. 
So if you listen to us, hi, um, contact us or we're going to talk. It's fine and the, the, the license says we are allowed to unlimited download. So.